Hey up lads and lasses, Dan Fire here, back again with some more Infinite Lagrange. Today we are looking at the CTG and ranking the modules, that's the extra ones that you get. I have included the ones that are in some of the slots like A1 uh, and M1 that you do get, uh, because it's a choice between them. So yeah, we'll do this same format as before, uh, and we'll uh, just yeah jump straight into it. So we'll start off with M1 because uh, it's the main weapon system that you see. Uh, so M1, it's going to go into the A slot. It is an energy, it's a giant laser basically for all intents and purposes uh, with a 400 damage per hit and 9000 DPM. It's pretty good, but at the same time, it's not as good as the M2 slot. So let's talk about the M2. In my opinion, the M2 is better. For one, it's not direct fire, you get torpedoes. So the M2 slot is the Gamma Storm projectile attack system and you get the Gamma Storm torpedo. It's a bigger alpha, it's got a slower rate of fire but its DPM is higher and it's indirect fire because it's a torpedo. So if you do run into those pesky Karelian tank fleets, uh, you'll ignore them and go blow up the ships you need to blow up that are pumping out the damage. So this is by far the better option, in my opinion. Uh, the laser is obviously very good, um, but I, I do think that the M2 slot is considerably better. I'm actually gonna move the M1 down to B tier because uh, I think it I think it fits a little bit better there. In the A slots now, you only have two options here. You have A1, which is the one that it comes with. These missiles are fantastic and there's no doubt about it. It is absurd the damage uh, that these pump out. Uh, but I feel they go in the A slot and that's because of the A2 slot. Again, I think it's better. So quick one on the A1, it's 24,000 DPM as standard with 850 damage per missile. Uh, launches quite a few missiles and it's it's an all round decent weapon. Again, indirect fire, it's gonna ignore those Karelians and hit uh, the mid row first. So it's gonna dish out some decent damage here for certain. We then have the A2, now you lose well, you don't quite lose, but you instead you get energy missiles. Now these have a lower DPM and a lower alpha at 750, uh, and I believe the DPM is around 20,000 or something like that as standard. But energy-based weapons are not mitigated by armor. They are mitigated by energy resistances, but you don't see that until cruisers really, and even then they have limited amounts and. Again, the ST-59 is the real thing that only, well, the only real thing that can have proper energy resistance that you really need to worry about. Again, these are missiles, they are energy based, so they are indirect fire still. You literally, it's, it's all the bonuses from A1, but energy stuck on top, which just makes it flat out better in my opinion. So there you go. That's your A1, so we have M2A2 so far in our S rank. For our B slots, we start with the generic battery system. Uh, this just adds some cannons. I believe they're anti-large as well with 720 alpha on the big cannons and uh, 3000 DPM. Then, okay, at best. Um, in this slot, if you check, you have the, the cannons and then two anti-airs. Now the anti-airs on the CTG are, well, one of them works actually quite well. Um, I have seen a fully equipped uh, anti-aircraft CTG before and it's kind of devastating what it can uh, potentially do. A lot of things will attack it first. For the example, the Vetus Bs will go for your battle cruisers first. So um, with that in mind, the most of the time your anti-aircraft weapons that are on the ships do do a bit. On the CTG, they can do a lot because the CTG's high HP, it's a battle cruiser, it's gonna last um, a while. So in my opinion, the B1 slot is B tier 
And then you put the B2, which is the uh, energy based turrets. Uh, I think that's the right one. That's the energy cannons. The other one's the missile system, I think. Yeah, B3 is the missile system. So in B2, you have the energy cannons. These do some work against aircraft, and I actually think they are better than just putting on slightly decent DPM. I just think the B1 slot is overrated, and just pushing your DPM up more when you've already got your M2 and A2 slot just doesn't make much sense to me. Uh, in that case, I'm going to put B3 ahead of B1, and this is due to the fact, again, these are anti-aircraft missiles. They do pretty well. I feel the energy turrets do slightly better, and it has something to do potentially with the hit rate of energy, these type of energy turrets just being better overall. Uh, if you have a look at the likes of... Um, Iron Rubies and stuff like that, and their energy turrets, they do considerably better at AA. Uh, the Mer T has an anti aircraft variant, but the Pulse variant does better than the anti aircraft variant at anti air. Um, Tauruses as well. There's something uh, going on with how the energy based or energy turret based uh, weapon anti air weapons are working and they do seem to actually function correctly so i do recommend um the pulse weapons over the missiles uh, again i'd recommend the missile the anti-aircraft missiles over the uh, b1 the small ship cannons that do some damage we then move over to c1 and you get the energy compression device this is an odd one because I've been unable to test this out because it boosts your ion cannon damage. That's your M1 slot. And I'm not certain if it works if you switch to the M2 slot. So I am a little bit, unfortunately uh, and unusually, uh, not sure where to really put this one. I guess I'll put it behind the M1 slot because boosting your M1 slot's damage by 15% uh, is pretty decent. But again, indirect fire generally trumps direct fire in most situations here. So it's potentially not that useful at all. Thankfully though, your CTG, because of course, can also carry aircraft. Four. I believe as well, same as the ST-59. So you can carry medium fighters with your C2 slot. Again, adding the versatility to the ship of an already high DPM ship, and now you're adding medium fighters, so it can certainly do anti-aircraft. On top of, you know, you put four spores in here, and this is what I'd ideally put in here as spores. You put four spores in here, and then you've got your B2 slot, which is anti-air as well, and it'll it's going to do some work on the enemy, uh, and it's going to be noticeable, and it's going to work really nicely, and it synergizes really nice, uh, well with keeping the ship alive, especially with a lot of swarm around at the moment in the current meta. So, I reckon the C2 slot's probably S rank. We then have the C3 slot going into D tier. Again, it's spotter UAVs. We all know they don't work properly. And well, they do work. It's just that the hit rate increase is just so pitiful that it's not worth running uh, at all, in my opinion. So I'm gonna put it in D tier. One day, if they buff these and these work correctly, it'll be fantastic. Something else to note, if you've got five CTGs and they've all got these spotter UAVs, for whatever reason, they seem to go and buff one ship and just keep buffing that one over and over and over again, which is fine, but it's always the wrong ship. It'll buff your support series or something like that, just just because it can. <laughs> it's sod's law with these things, really. We then go on to the D slots. So in D1, you have the short range anti-aircraft system. It's for cannons. Uh, they are projectile, unfortunately. It doesn't work correctly at the current time. So uh, I'd probably ignore this one if you can. We then have the D2 slot, 
which I'm going to put into B. It reduces the crit damage uh, by 60% on your main weapon system. That means it only affects M1 or M2, unfortunately. If it affected all systems, I'd probably put this up into A or S tier, but it does only affect the uh, main weapon system, M1 or M2, depending on your choice there, which does, it does hurt it at the end of the day. We then have the damage monitoring system. These are healing UAVs, but they only heal the CTG. Unlike the spears, which can, are proper healing UAVs that'll go out and heal other ships, these will only heal the CTG itself. It's going in A tier, and it's due to the fact that I don't think it's worthy of S tier. It can't heal other ships, so it can't fill a, like, a support role. It only heals itself. The healing's not particularly great on it, uh, but it is better than the the, uh, the anti-crit system, and it's definitely better than the anti-cannons. Uh, um, yeah, so it's going to go into A tier and not S tier on like the spears healing UAVs. Again, like I said, it doesn't heal as much, and it doesn't heal other ships as well. So it's relatively meh at best. So that's it for the CTG. Uh, I hope you enjoy the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys next time.